seasoned by God. Hello, Sneaker Hibbert. How are you? Hello, everyone. Ava Loren. How are you as well? Thank you for inviting your followers. Hi. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Joshua. Sims Music, how are you? I'll see how fast I can catch up with the names that are going by so quickly. All right, Lady Pray 3, God bless you. God bless each and every one of you who are sharing with your, your um, all of your followers as well as on Twitter and Facebook. If you can go ahead, I want to talk about how I planted a seed, seeds of prayer for 16 years and I finally got the chance to see the harvest on that seed in the natural as of yesterday. So go ahead and begin to share with all of your followers and um, I want to bless you really quick so that way you can be encouraged in this season of your life. I didn't comb my hair today because I'm tired from yesterday's pain in full. Um, and so I just, I didn't comb it and um, I think I don't care today. In regards to it but go ahead and share with all of your followers please do so with on Facebook and on Twitter also uh, for those of you who are signing up for the crushing mentorship program today as well as the uh, the crushing of a prophetic vessel um, as you many many of you may know um, you do have a sponsor today who wanted to sponsor you and the price did go down it's a discounted price uh, but go ahead and check out the website because I really don't want to talk too much about that it is at KeishaLCephas.com um, and you can go ahead and look at the details and see who um, you won't see their name but you will see that you have been sponsored there are only a limited amount of slots at KeishaLCephas.com for both of the programs and the mentorship program actually starts tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It will close off for enrollment at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time and we will be done with that. All right. I, I want to talk to you about sowing seed of prayer. Um, I, my sister, I have two sisters. I am 42 and then I have a sister that is 30 and then I have another sister who is 34. Um, both of them I've been praying for 16 and a half years. Um, the middle one um, gave her life back to Christ last month. And then the baby girl suddenly, out of nowhere, gave her life to Christ on yesterday. They both participated in the paid in full. Um, that was their first time ever sowing a $1,000 seed. They did it uh, one month in advance, um, the same way that God was speaking to me about um, sowing seed in advance. Neither one of us knew that we were sowing seed. Um, what I wanted to tell you is that um, God makes promises. He promised that if he save us, he'll save our entire household. And even when there's a rip or a tear where they, um, your siblings or parents or um, loved ones, even friends, even if they excommunicate, you don't want to have anything else to do with you or for a period of time they're not talking to you never cut off your communication with god and praying for them um i have there is a big gap um in age but uh the history of our relationship is that we did grow up in a household with our mother so we all have the same mom but they both share the same father i did not um, at the age of 15 or 16, my mother was bound by drugs, which meant that they were little girls at the time that she was bound by crack cocaine. Um, my grandmother actually took me into her household at the age of 16 and left my two sisters behind with my mom because my mom said that she could still take care of them um, because she never, we was never without a place to stay. We was never without food to eat. We had a mom that was visible, but she just was not mentally there for us. And I didn't want to see my mother look the way that she was looking. I was old enough to know that this is not my mom. Um, and at that age, my sister were very young and so um, not only was their mom bound by drugs who was once a big-time drug dealer and then became a big-time crackhead and so it 
hurts children to see their parents bound by something that they cannot help with. And the only thing you can do is it, it, say why you can't stop, but they can't stop because it's very demonic. It's a stronghold. It's a, it's, it's a sickness. And they believe that they can function with it. They believe that they can't function without it. And it hurts any child, no matter how old you are, you don't get over that when you're looking at your parent die. And I kept having these dreams about my mom being in a casket and I was in her at her funeral and I just didn't want to see that. So my grandmother um, wanted me to finish school and so she came and got me. And so there was a rip and a tear between me and my siblings, my sisters, an eight year and then a a uh, 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 12 year difference in our age. Um, also their father went to prison at the same time. My mother got bound by drugs and he had to do seven years in prison. So not only did they really lose their mother, um, mentally and just being there for them as a parent, but they also lost their father, um, into the penitentiary system. And so, um, my sisters, um, Suffers like me, like I did, with rejection, abandonment, low self-esteem, fatherlessness, and um, it took them a long time to bounce back. So when I got saved, my language changed, my actions changed, um, the way I saw things change, and there's still this rip and this tear in my relationship with my sisters because um, the way I may say something to them they may not want to hear it because it's the truth that always sets a man free, but a lie will keep a person bound. So there was always these arguments. And the last one happened about maybe a year ago. It seemed like I got into it with both of them. Um, they were, were very disrespectful on the phone to me and um, even cussed me out um, to the point that I was hurt by it, but I didn't respond because I knew if I responded carnally, then those 16 and a half years of seeds of prayer would be nothing at that point because then they won't see God. They'll just see their old sister. And I never wanted to represent a God that they could not come to. And so I never responded to them in a carnal way. I never did cuss them out, but I banked on the fact that I believe God will manifest himself and save my sisters. One of my sisters was in the hand of a warlock. Both of them uh, were always in the bed with lion loves. And I knew what that looked like. And I always told them the truth. And even if I had a prophetic word for them, I would release the word. But you know, when your heart is hardened, you don't want to hear the truth. And so you always think that person is probably against you, even though you will say, I hear you, I believe you, but it still was this rip and it's still this tear. Well, yesterday when I saw my baby sister come to Christ, it shocked me because I was on the first row and I knew that she was in attendance and I had just talked to her before the service started and she was telling me how excited that they both were in regards to giving their seed for paid in full and then the, the middle one said, you know, uh, big sister, we're really proud of you. Uh, we see what God is doing in your life and we really want God to do that for us and I was really shocked that she said that and I'm like, wow. Um, God is really amending our relationship and bringing about restoration and reconciliation. And as I, I always tell you guys, sometimes I can be emotionally disconnected. So I have to be in the moment and I have to be very intentional um, because sometimes I can be disconnected and God is doing something on the inside of my heart concerning my family. And I'm like, my God, this girl has come to the altar and giving her life to Christ. She knew as a little girl that my mother introduced her to Christ, but there's nothing like making a decision on your own to come to him as a backslider, because we know that God is married to the backslider, and there's nothing like you coming to Christ on your own and saying that you surrender, and that you is giving up, you know, uh, everything that 
that once had you bound, you come into the altar saying, I want to be delivered from everything that's keeping me bound. And for the middle sister to say, hey, I took new members course and now I'm enrolled and uh, <laughs> she's enrolled in foundations now, how she's doing her homework and how she be in attendance for Sunday service and coming there for one service and then end up staying for two services and all things like that. I know you on here trying to be a distraction, but the next person, I'm not going to actually block you because salvation is going to come through. Actually, if you're on here like this, it's because it's by divine appointment and it is a divine assignment. God knows that you are abandoned as well. That's why you sit at the computer and you can, and you troll other people pages and their broadcasts. So Jesus Christ is a lover of all people and he desires that all mankind be saved. So today I'm going to plant a seed that even you be saved today just by this seed and someone else will come along and water it. And then I'll bank on that God will get the increase. And I'm not going to say anything else to you and give you the attention that you've been lacking from your mother and father over a decade, but that's perfectly fine. Today, you got a little bit of attention because God loves you just the way he loves me. And he wants to see you healed and delivered as well. So we'll bank on that. But yeah, so 16 and a half years, my sisters, low self-esteem, abandonment, fatherlessness, and just simply rebellious, full of pride, stubbornness. And how do I know? Because I know that those are the same characteristic traits I had, the same demons that I was bound with. And I want to encourage you, don't give up on your family. God will not disappoint you. If you have been praying for your family, I'm going to tell you to represent God well. We cannot act one way at the church and act another way in front of our family because we will lose our testimony. We will lose our credibility and they will not believe in the God that we want them to serve. So even when there is a rip or there is a tear in the relationship, you got to go to God and get on your face and begin to pray and intercede for them. And even if they cut you off, do not allow that to cut off the communication with God. Continue to intercede for your family members. Yes, nobody wants to be disrespected. Yes, no one wants to see their family members bound by drugs. Yes, no one wants to see family members um, in ungodly soul ties. Yes, no one wants to have this conflict. But let me tell you something. The enemy would love to get you to have unforgiveness in your heart because it would cut off your communication with God. And so when I tell you that if you have any issues with your siblings, with your parents, any loved one, get that stuff out your heart today. And if you know that you did not represent God well in the midst of a conflict, you go back and you apologize. And then you go back into prayer and you ask God to amend that thing, to restore it and reconcile it. Because let me tell you, those seeds that we've been planting for years in the ground with prayer, it is not in vain. God is going to allow us to see a harvest. And even if we die and go to heaven, I'm telling you, those seeds will still come into fruition. I see it all the time when apostle call out people and he said that I see the prayers or I hear the prayers of your grandmother or I hear the prayers of an old woman or I hear the prayers of your mother. Those are the seeds of prayer. And they are being watered and they will, and we will see the increase and God will get the increase and he will get the glory. I've been praying for my sisters for 16 and a half years, asking God to destroy generational curses, bloodline curses, witchcraft. I've been asking God to take away mind control, to give them encounters with God and angelic visitations and put people in a path, men of righteousness, women, God, women of like precious faith. I've been asking Asking God to, to, to reveal himself to them, even in the midst of situations and circumstance. I've been asking God to put his finger within their soul and let the stuff that that's in their heart begin to surface, that they won't have no issues with their mother, no issues with their fathers, no issues with their siblings, no issues with grandmothers, no issues with peers, no issues with old lovers. I've been asking God to rip them out of the hands of the enemy because I know that there are great gifts. And I know that God desires to give them a, 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 
uh, a prosperous end because the thoughts that he has towards them are good and they are not of evil to give them an expected end. And I understood that God created them in his image and after his likeness. And when he looked upon them, he saw that it was good. And how dare I look at them from my own perspective. So I had to learn how to join up with God and partner up with God and begin to see them from his perspective and begin to see them from their future and not their current state. And I began to pray even when we was not talking. I didn't have any issues in my heart. I kept my face to the floor and I began to pray for long lengths of time. I began to fast for long lengths of time, even when they didn't know it. Why? Because what you do in secret, according to Matthew 6, God will reward you openly. And so I say unto you, be encouraged, even though it looks like it's not manifesting yet. That thing has already been done in the heavens. And even if the Prince of Persia wants to stop it in the second heavens, God will send an angel and cause that thing to be manifested in the earth. But you got to represent him well. You can't have no two face and you can't have no double tongue. You got to be one way and that's God's way. You got to remain Christ like at all times. I don't care if they do get ugly. You don't become ugly. I don't care if they start cussing you out. You still have to remain humble and you bow your heart and you bend your knees to God and you lift your hands and you begin to pray for them and you begin to declare the word over their life. You make announcements over their life. You make proclamations over their life. You speak blessings over their life. You speak over their children and you demand justice even for them. And you say to yourself that this is not how God created them. Everything that I see today in them are driven by demonic forces, motivated by hell. So therefore I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. I am not wrestling against their carnal mind for this thing that we see are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore I can't have a carnal mind if they have a carnal mind. They need to see God at all times in me so that way they can buy into the God that I serve each and every day. Nobody wants a God that they can't serve if they see you cussing them out, if they see that you disrespectful, if they see you have a nasty attitude, if they see you not moved to compassion, if they see that you are not sovereign, if they see that you won't pray for them and no matter how they treated me, if they called me and asked me for prayer, I always pray for them as if nothing else even happened. Why? Because they needed someone to stand in a gap for them. We are called gap fillers. We are to stand in the gap and we are to make up the hedge. We make up walls and we stand even when in their wicked ways, we still stand and we see from God's perspective and we begin to prophesy their future and we believe God that we will see the fulfillment of the promises according to their life. So don't get discouraged when it looks like things may be getting worse. You bank on the fact that God is not a liar and he will not disappoint and he will not bring you to shame. So when others say, where is your God? You can still bank on. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And he hears the cries of the righteous and he answers them and he delivers them from all of their troubles and their distress. This is the confidence that I have in God that whatsoever I ask him according to his word and his will, he will answer me. That's what I bank on. I walk by faith, not by sight. I call those things to be not as though they were. Yes, they not my children, but they are my blood. And if I believe God to shift my generation and they are part of my blood, I believe God to shift them. And so no matter how long it took, I stayed on my face and I began to pray. And when I have burdens and I begin to pray for them, I'll pray that burden. I'll be like, well, God, they grown now. It's their choice. They want to live that way. I don't have nothing to do with that. I serve you and they need to learn how to serve you. No, I ask God to take the scales off their eyes and cause the, their heart not to be hardened anymore and give them a heart of flesh. I ask God to give them a new heart and a new spirit the way he did in the book of Ezekiel. And then I also God ask God, let me prophesy. Even though they not in the midst of me, Jesus Christ sent forth his word and he healed them. So I'll send forth your word, God, and I'll begin to prophesy to their dry bones and I'll hear them rattle and they shall come together and there'll be life in them and there'll be breath in them and they will not die at the hands of another and they will not die prematurely. They are my sisters and I believe God for them. And so therefore I continue to pray for them. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the lover of my soul. Jesus loves them just as much as he loves me. He's going to always be in the people's business.
business. And therefore, if he is in the people business, I am in the people business. And therefore, I'm going to always stand in the gap. I don't care if they wicked. I don't care if if they have crossed me, if they betrayed me, it doesn't matter. They are my blood and I'm going to stand in the gap for them. The same way I can stand in the gap for somebody that's no kin to me. The same way that we work altars in our church and believe God for deliverance. We need to believe God for deliverance for our family members. A lot of them don't even want to come to us. They see us work altars every Sunday and believe God for other people who are no kin to us. But when it comes to our relatives, we don't show no mercy. We don't show them no grace and we're very hard on them. We won't even forgive them. But how dare we act this way? We have to show the same grace that we would show to someone that is in, on the altar. We got to have an altar in our own houses and believe God that he will save our loved ones. And the same way that we can cast out demons upon those that come to our churches the same way we are moved to compassion by those who are bound we need to be moved to compassion for our sisters our brothers our cousins our uncles our aunts our mothers our fathers it doesn't matter they are our blood we didn't ask to be born into the family but though we are we better pray for them the same way we stand at altars and pray for those that come up and ask for healing that ask for deliverance that ask for salvation that ask to break off strongholds we need to do the very same thing for our loved ones and even if we don't have an open door we send forth the word and it shall heal them and it shall deliver them don't leave them off your list you keep them on your list you continue to pray and you're going to see the harvest your brother is going to be saved your sister is going to be saved your cousins are going to be saved your grandmother be saved mother father it doesn't matter why because we got seed in the ground and the rain has come and now we're getting getting ready to see the harvest. Your daughters are being saved. Your sons are being saved. It doesn't matter. God is saving husbands. He's saving wives. And I don't care if he the worst husband you ever experienced. You pray for them because God can change the heart of any man and he can change the heart of any woman. Don't give up on the seed. Continue to plant seeds of prayer. You will see the harvest. I didn't see my sisters get saved for 16 and a half years. They've been in a backslidden state but God has answered and it has brought joy, joy to my heart. And I'm excited. Tears of joy. Because I love them. And I know God is super excited for their future. Joy is what I have. I'm excited and I'm excited about your family the same way because he's come to answer us today. I believe that with my whole heart. Don't give up on the seeds. He's faithful. He won't disappoint and he will not let you be brought to shame. He loves us just that much. He's a good God and I'm excited about my two sisters. I've been praying for 16 and a half years and nobody knows what you may go through in the midnight hour concerning your family because people might not be moved the way you're moved by your family. But there's nothing like seeing God manifest himself in this way. I'm super excited. I know my mother is rejoicing that she lived to see the day that her two babies, who she's been praying for, for years, finally come to salvation. Because it hurts a mother when your children are in a backslidden state and when you know to some degree that you had a part to play in it, but they can't blame you all the days of their life. But to see that God delivered my mother and he has delivered my two sisters has brought me joy this morning or this afternoon. So I tell you, don't give up. God will answer. He will answer you. He will not disappoint. He will not bring you to shame. Those midnight hours that you get up and cry for your family, it's not in vain. God will answer. He did it for me, and he'll do it for you. So that's the reason for this school. Get you a prayer life, honey. If you don't have one, get you one. Get you one. I don't care if your family members are locked up behind bars. You can pray, and God will allow you to 
favor with kings and with priests and judicial systems. I'm telling you, he will turn things around. I have seen it done so many times. And I have been asking God, I pray for everybody else's family. What about mine? What about mine? The same way I used to look at my children. I used to say the same and he saved them. What more would he do? I'm telling y'all, this is the season where we're going to see our family saved. We've been standing in a gap for years, for years for them, crying out to God, help, deliver, save, set free, heal, break bunges, bands of wickedness, bunges of our family members. We've been believing it for years. Years, years waiting at the at the front in the church. You see so many family members coming to Christ, and then you ask God, "Where's mine? Where's my sisters? Where's my cousins? Where's my uncle?" You ask those questions, but He's not a liar. He won't disappoint, and He will bring it to pass. So don't stop praying. He's faithful, and to see my sister get up down her own, both of them. Is amazing to me. Amazing. I would never lose my prayer life. Ever. Ever. I was standing again all the days of my life. And I will remain God's prophet. And I'll remain his intercessor. It was worth it. I can say it. The 16 and a half years of praying and fasting and believing. It was worth that moment. I could have ran, but I didn't want to. I didn't because I know her. She will back up and she will shrink back. So I just kept my composure and I left it for this day. But I didn't realize how happy, how much joy I had just to know that both of my baby sisters are saved. They are saved and nothing will be able to pluck them out of God's hand. I believe God for them. Nothing. I will never lose my prayer life because God answers me. I have a track track record with him. He answers me and I don't care how long it takes. I just believe him. I believe him. I believe him because I know he's not a liar. I believe him. So don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. This is why I teach people how to pray. It's not about just money. I want you to see the benefits of having a prayer life. It is amazing to see prayers come to pass. He did it for me. That's it. I believe God for you the same way he did it for me. That's it. Don't stop praying. Love you guys. Don't stop. Don't lose hope. Keep your confidence in God. He will answer you. Mother, father, I don't care what they bound by. God is stronger than any addiction. He did it for my mother. He's stronger than any line love. He will break them out. He's stronger than any rebellion, pride, stubbornness, haughtiness. It doesn't matter. He's stronger than anger, rage, abandonment, fatherlessness, or orphan spirit. He's stronger than any of those because he's God and he heard the cries of the righteous. Here come our family. Here come our family. We don't see others coming to Christ, but now here come ours. I prophesy your mother, your father, sisters, brothers, uncles, cousins, peers. Here they come. He did it for me. What more would he do for me?